Hi, you have installed Eros Innovator successfully and now you wonder, okay, what are the next step? I am your guide, Angela, and I will give you a first sightseeing tour. So when you have installed Innovator, you should be able to get this login screen and you have a couple of new folders installed at your local machine or a server. Luckily, for when you're really completely new, you don't need to know a lot about sys folders. The only files that might be important for you at the start is the Innovator Server config, because this one um, you can specify when you have additional databases or want to, to use add some test databases or made something wrong in the installation process, then you can simply um, correct wrong values here directly in this file. Um, so here we have some links to our three databases that I use right now. You can never have enough databases. Don't start with one database because you may have a main database already that you want to use and you don't want to mess up your main database, especially not in the beginning when you're completely new and completely lost. Always test out stuff in a test database that you can simply throw away when it's broken. And believe me, you will bro break your databases pretty soon. It's, it's a natural process. Um, so here we have some links to our three databases that I use right now. You can never have enough databases. Don't start with one database because you may have a main database already that you want to use and you don't want to mess up your main database, especially not in the beginning when you're completely new and completely lost. Always test out stuff in a test database that you can simply throw away when it's broken. And believe me, you will bro break your databases pretty soon. It's, it's a natural process. So here we also have our license key. But for, for really, this is a beginner's guide. So for you at the beginning, this is the only file in the code tree that is relevant. So here we also have our license key. But for, for really, this is a beginner's guide. So for you at the beginning, this is the only file in the code tree that is relevant. Start with something more fun. Let's first time log in. Innovator comes with five um, pre-built accounts that you can, but you cannot use all of them for login. In theory, yes, but there are only two um, that you can can use for login for the first time. The first one is the root account. So default password is root and it comes with a, a default password. Default name is root and it comes with a default password called innovator. This one is the root account. It's the most powerful account in innovator because it also allows you to change core items. Um, you can log in and take a look what you see. It's not so much different from the admin account. It just has a lot more rights and you also allows you to change stuff that you shouldn't change when you don't know what you do, which I assume is the case when you're a beginner. Um, when you're a beginner and don't want to crash your innovator in your first tests, then I recommend you to use the standard admin account. So username admin, password is also innovator. And then you can log in. You can also specify the database. I right now have three of them. One is just a personal test database. Then I have the regular innovator solutions database and in parallel for testing the innovator core database. We can log in to both of them and then you will immediately see the difference. So just let's use innovator solutions right now. Especially when you log in the first time, um, it will need uh, a little bit more time than it will require later. This is a simply caching issue. So later when all images and also web page is in your cache, then things get, get a little bit faster. And as we log in at admin, we now see on our, oh, I already made a mistake. In the beginning, you will probably see something like this. So a page with a lot of objects. Don't be confused. Um, this is an admin view. 
admin is powerful. Admin sees a lot more stuff than your regular users will see. Um, regular users normally just will see a couple of these items. And I also think um, the current main page will change over the next few innovative versions because what I have heard is they want to 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 make it more customizable for the end user. So don't be don't this is nothing to be scared of. So everything is fine. You're just admin, so you are confronted with a lot of admin objects. Um, for better navigation, use the site as a table of contents, which you can activate with the nav button and also pin it here. And you can see first section is a pretty huge administration section that is only visible for administration administrators. And the change management and design and document section are included because we are now using the Innovator Solutions database. And Innovator Solutions already contains a product engineering application. And this application for product engineering um, contains every contains some some change management and um, processes and default item types so you can handle your parts or do some document management so c3 are included in the product engineering application and when we now would log in to the innovator core let's just do it it's why not show it when we have the possibility innovator core uh, admin and waiter I still have to optimize my speed a little bit should be faster But it's also first time logged into the core database at all. It show up is lonesome. So here you can see um, what's included in the core database, and it's just administration, extended classification, and my innovator. And compared to So you see, compared to um, the core database, I already for I forgot, forgot one item. Of course, also sourcing, which covers manufacturer part and manufacturers, is also included in the product engineering solution. So you can see with additional applications, you get more additional entries in the contents. And as I mentioned in my installation video, um, Innovator Solution contains product engineering but there are a lot of other applications available. So when you later install manufacturing process planning or product manage project management or component engineering, you will get additional entries in this section. This is a visible part for the end user, but of course, when you add additional applications, you will also get additional folders in the code tree. So there is a lot of stuff affected when you add something additional but for you as end user or as admin and new admin this is all you need to know from the start okay i have this content sections that contains the different features that are available and for you what do you need from when you start with innovator what do you need to know in the administration section is the biggest it as uh, administration section is the biggest section and the, the only the first thing you might need to know is the user's entry you can directly click on this um how does it how is it called in english i don't know on this little icon or you can just click to users directly and then search for the users so this will give you this table of the users that are currently available and as i mentioned before we have five we are now logged in as admin and the super as i said, the 
the only account that is more mighty than the admin is the root account which you only use when you really have to use it and and the other accounts are so-called system accounts that are not intended for end users but they're required for for for, for example the vault admin account is required that the, the vault server can lo log into innovator or the enter es account this is accounts especially used for the enterprise search feature but this one is a subscription feature so right now when you would use this enterprise search box here at the top it will probably complain that or it will not complain it will give me an offer to buy a license probably or block the browser it's probably a very performance consuming task to perform an enterprise search when you don't have enterprise search installed so this is also a feature you you have to install later yeah a subscriber feature thank you um then and the auto authentication account is used for the OAuth server communication so this, this, these are not intended for you one thing that you can do at the beginning or you always should do at the begin, beginning especially when your database is already some kind of live change the password of all of these five because everybody in the innovator world it's it's easy to find out that the standard password for for iris innovator is innovator so it's easy for your end users to know about this password and then they can, can log in and mess around and we don't want that so changing a password is pretty simple you just double click on one of these accounts then you can see everything that is specified for this account you can also see this login enabled box i think not all of these accounts are enabled i assume enterprise search admin should be disabled because we right now don't need it oh, i'm right it's it's not enabled so you wouldn't be able to log in with this account because it's simply not enabled and for changing the password you'd simply click the edit button specify a new password type it correctly this is all we need to set here then save save your change and click done when you're finished with your change I really have to optimize my speed a little bit. This, this mess doesn't make fun. So this is what you do, change passwords. And when you want to create a new new user for, for an end user, then you simply can go to this button, create a new user. This will give you, give you a new form and makes a new entry in your list and it's so slow that I probably will stop my video and continue it later until I have improved my speed a little bit so the only, you see this one this field is a little bit blue this tells us it's a required field and you can type in a login name like you want like underground specify a password type it in correctly and don't forget to activate this log on enable button and send you and type in the correct password and really type in the correct password and this way you can create a new user account a standard user account when you want to use 
Windows Active Directory login. Um, this is possible, but requires a, a, a couple of changes in the code tree. And this is um, the official... I'm not sure if the documentation for Active Directory is really available for, for free users. For subscribers, there are guidelines available that you can use. It, the process with Active Directory is a little bit easier in Innovator 12 in the current Innovator version than it was in the past. And ah, it, it's interesting. It now had stored our new user. And as we don't have specified a first name and a last name, it simply shows us the ID of this user element. And when I now give this user a real name, then it should get, yes, now it's undergroup, by right? undergroup, underground. Should be, it has to be correct. Okay, so this would be my new user, login name, simple task, or the start. Here you can see this is a table of users. Of course, this table can get very long. And all you need to know when you are new um, is that the first, first um, row in this table is a search row. So when we, we have a lot of users, then we can simply say, okay, just show me users with A and get used to wildcards. So this is not a Google search where you can just like enter something like, yeah, admin. Of course, it will show you the admin, but you will not get the, the we admin or the enterprise search admin. So always use white, white cards when you want to, to search something specific. So first line is a, is a search row. There are other search modes available, but this is just a beginner guide nothing more and when you um, want to use Ares Innovator as product lifecycle management solution you will probably say okay I want to to do a um, bill of material handling and here we you would normally go to the design parts section And again, first row is a search row. Okay, we don't have any entries. Why? Well, this is a blank new database. There is no data included. And there is a, I think a small sample database available. Set up, we, I will try to install in the next video and then we can play around with some basic functionality. Of course, you can now, like we have created a new user, you can also create now a new part. So create a new new part entry. But as my, ah, it's now it's a little bit faster. Maybe it's really just a caching problem. So you can now specify a new part. Okay, here, this is really a really basic setup. Here we even have to define the part number by yourself. Part, let's name it a screw. Yeah, set something for the next video. I will see if we can get some demo data, some realistic demo data, and then we are fine.